Hi everyone, my name's Rhea and I'm a three-time Musica finalist, meaning I ranked in the top 26 high schoolers in the United States of America by the time I was just in 10th grade and 15 years old. And today, I'm going to tell you how I guaranteed my success in reaching these achievements and how you can do the same thing for your Musica progress. The first part is making sure that the time you have to spend on Musico matches with your goals. So for example, I have talked to students before who are, you know, just starting out with the USA Competing Olympiad in bronze division, and they want to reach Yusuko camp, so a top 26 in the USA. And they want to do so in about two years, which is pretty average for how fast Yusuko competitors typically do it. And then I ask them, how many hours a week do you have to spend towards Yusuko? And they say, two hours a week. Now let's stop and think about this for a second. How many hours a week do you spend showering? I know for me, it's about two hours a week, right? 15 minutes, a little bit more than that per day, which is about two hours a week. So they spend just as much time showering in a week as they do for Yusuko. That puts it in perspective and it's not that many hours. And let's think about this. If you spend two hours a week times 52 weeks in a year times two years, that's 208 hours. Okay, so you're putting in 208 hours. And it's actually going to be a little bit less than that because you want to be prepared by the time you take your first platinum contest, which is about five months before the actual Yusuko camp selection um, selections come out. But ignoring that, let's just say it's 208 hours. Now let's say that a different competitor prepares over summer. And because it's summer and they're free, they do 40 hours a week which is an understatement, I've seen people do like up to 60, let's just say 40 hours a week to be conservative. Within six weeks, they would have completed 240 hours, which is more than the first competitor does within two whole years. So in a month and a half, they beat the competitor working for two whole years. Right, Yusuko is a competition, meaning you have to beat other people, okay? If all you have to do is two hours a year, or sorry, two hours a week, you're not gonna advance do you go camp in two years? And I just shouldn't say never, like you're not gonna advance, but it's highly, highly unlikely that that's gonna occur. So what do you do in this case? Well, if you wanna work two hours a week and make you go camp in two years, those two things don't align. You have to make your work input align with your goals. And so you have two options. One, you can either increase your work, or two, you can decrease your goals. You have to either work harder so that your work aligns with your goals, or decrease your goals to match the work and time that you're able to put in. Now let's say, you say, okay, I'm gonna study one hour a day, that's seven hours a week. Well, think about this for a second. How many hours a day do you spend eating? For me, it's more than one hour a day. You know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, sometimes a snack. So if you're gonna say that you're gonna spend less time on Yusuko than you spend eating, you know, again, I'm not saying that that's bad. What I'm saying is you have to make sure your work input matches your goals. Now, maybe your work input is right now you're really busy. So right now it's going to be like really low in terms of Yusuko hours. But in a couple months, you're going to be less busy in school, spend more time. Over summer, you're going to be even less busy and just spend a lot of time on Yusuko. Okay, fine. Right, then your total input for work still matches your goals. But if you're planning on doing like seven hours a week for like an entire year, you know, that's still going to be, what, 7 times 52 hours. It's still not that much. In terms of making camp, it's more realistic than 2 hours, but again, you're competing with all the other kids in the, U in the USA, right? And are there 26 people who work harder than 7 hours a week? I'm sure there are. And so, you know, if you want to beat them, you do have to put in the hours to sort of you just have to put in the hours to, to earn your spot there. Okay, so let's say you heard all of that and you said, I want to increase the amount of work I do for you, Sukkot, right? Remember, there's two parts. If your work doesn't equal your goals, you either have to reduce your goals or increase your work so that they meet. Let's say you decide, I want to increase my work. How do I do that, Rhea? Well, let's get into that, right? I actually filmed an entire video on how do you motivate yourself more for you, Sukkot. It'll be in that corner and down below in the description so you can check it out. Um, check it out after this video. Just finish watching this video first. Um, so in that video, I go into super in depth on how to motivate yourself for Yusuko and I reference, you know, psychiatrists who study this and doctors and everything. So definitely check that video out. I wish I had that when I was preparing for Yusuko to motivate myself to work harder. I unfortunately didn't have that when I was preparing for Yusuko. 
So I relied on something else. Um, I relied on friendly competition. And I filmed the video on exactly how I did that too. It'll again be linked in the corner and down below in the description. But just to give you a brief overview, there were people I believed who were my similar level in terms of intelligence, but they were ranking much higher than me in Yusuko. And so I was like, huh, if they can do it, then I can do it. And so I started working harder and harder on Yusuko to try to beat them. And I ended up eventually beating them. Um, but yeah, that friendly competition really pushed me to work harder. I also filmed the video with an amazing young lady named Keta. She is an EGOI first place, so number one girl in the world in terms of high school programming competitions. She also advanced to IOI. So, you know, top four in her country of Georgia in programming competitions of high, for high schoolers. So she's brilliant. And she also talks about in the interview how she used friendly competition to push her to work harder and to do better. So definitely go check that out too when it comes out. That interview will probably come out in a month or two. Um, so yeah, there's many different ways to motivate yourself to spend more time and definitely check out the two videos I linked there. When the Keta interview comes out, I will link that again in the, there and down below in the description. Check those three out if you're really struggling to push yourself to spend more hours on Yusuko. Another thing that I found helpful when I was in high school is setting my priorities towards Yusuko over other things. So for example, you know, 10th grade, I made Yusuko camp for the first time, top 26 in the US. In 11th grade, I wanted to do even better. So in 11th grade, I chose not to take AP US history so that I'll have more time to spend on Yusuko. It ended up paying off, right? I got into MIT based on my Yusuko encoding achievements, or at least that's what I think it was based on. You can never know with admissions. So definitely pushing your priorities to remove less important stuff and put more time to read Yusuko. Now, let me be clear. If you're just starting out with Yusuko, I would not recommend removing time from like APs and stuff to spend on Yusuko because you don't actually know how well you're going to do or how well you're even going to like it and different things like that. This is only after you've sort of had a proof of concept, as in you've proven you can do quite well in Yusuko and you need that extra time to move to the next level. So you're not making a huge gamble or a huge bet and everything, right? If you're already in platinum and you want to spend more time to work towards camp, then it will make sense to do. If you're just starting out in bronze, I don't think it makes sense to make a huge gamble on Yusuko because you don't actually know if it's going to fit your personality style, if you're going to like it, different things like that. Now, that being said, when you're just starting out in bronze, if you really want to give Yusuko a serious shot, you should still find a big chunk of time to really practice with Yusuko. Now, this could be summer, right? Summer is usually a really good time to focus on Yusuko. I know a lot of times people like to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to take this extra class that I could take in school, but I'm going to be a year ahead. Well, maybe instead of doing that, spend that time on Yusuko. Because at least from what I know, an extra class is not going to make a huge impact on college apps, but Yusuko would. So again, you're not making a huge gamble there because the extra class, yeah, not a big deal. Oh, but other kids are taking it. Okay, fine. Let them do what, they're, what they want. If they want to do something that's not going to be what, in my opinion, is a huge deal on college apps. Great. Let them do that. Use that as, as a place to be like, all right, I'm going to go beat them in terms of college apps by what I do this summer. And then you can take your time to focus on Yusuko, right? Doing an extra class, which is supposed to be a year round thing in three months is a lot of work. It's going to take up a lot of time per day. It's going to be more than just an average class. So definitely do that to give yourself time for Yusuko. I remember when I was going, when I was in high school, this one summer, all of my friends took chemistry over summer so that they can take AP chem the next year in school. Typically, we need to take normal bio, normal chem before we can start taking our AP science classes. And there were just so many AP science. There was AP chem, AP bio, AP physics one, AP physics two. And really, if you only take one science a year, two years are normal sciences that have to get done with. And then you can only take two AP sciences. So they were like, okay, we're going to take chem over the summer so we can take three AP sciences and put them on their college apps. Well, I got into MIT and none of the other friends did because I spent that summer preparing for Yusuko, right? Um, in terms of taking that class, did it make an impact on their college apps? I'm sure it helped that they took an additional AP science class, but help minutely, right? In terms of like, you want to think about how much impact that's going to make. And something like Yusuko, in my opinion, at least makes a much bigger impact. So you can take that small gamble just to get you started out with Yusuko. The third thing I did to guarantee my success in Yusuko was working smarter. Now notice I didn't say working smarter, not harder. No, no, no. We also worked hard, but it was also a matter of working smarter. Now, why is that important? Well, working smarter increases your rate of progress. Here's a quote from one of my students about our program. I saw that 
Using less problems in the Yusuko Guide, I began solving problems the Yusuko Guide rated as hard or very hard easily. Now this means that this student putting in less time and working on less problems than he would have with the Yusuko Guide was able to make faster improvement, right? Less time, more improvement. Okay, why is this critical? Because your rate of progress determines how fast you get better. If you make faster improvement, you're going to be able to outtake other people competing in Yusuko. And again, Yusuko is a competition. Everybody cannot advance by definition. A certain percentage of people advance. And for making Yusuko camp, it's a given number of 26. So if you want to advance to Yusuko camp or pass a division, you have to beat other people. Meaning if they are currently at a higher level than you because they've been doing it a little bit longer, you have to improve faster than them. If they're constantly working and making progress, you have to improve faster than them. Now, while you don't have to beat 100% of people competing, you do have to beat a decent chunk of them. And having a fast rate of progress is super effective there. It means you can beat them in a shorter period of time and you can advance in a shorter period of time. And this gives you additional time to spend on other things like the next division or Yusuko, or if you're just a busy high school student on your like classwork, extracurriculars, sleep, whatever that may be to you. Increasing your rate of progress is super critical. Now, how do we do this? How do we increase our rate of progress? Well, here's how. But the key idea is to focus on problem solving skills. So let me explain what I mean by that. What a lot of people do for Yusuko is they'll read a problem. If they get stuck, they'll read the solution, understand the solution, implement it, and move on. And here's the thing. When the solution gives you that next observation, the problem is that same observation is not going to show up on future and future problems. So although you're spending a lot of time working on these problems and understanding the observations, it's not going to help you as much for future problems. However, if you focus on problem solving skills, which are the steps that you take to arrive at that observation on your own, those problem solving skills will show up on future and future and future problems. So if you focus on learning problem solving skills, it'll help you with a whole bunch of future problems down the road, and it'll help you improve a lot faster. Now, the problem is that when you read the solution, it doesn't tell you how to arrive at the observation. Occasionally, a solution will if it's like a really well written one, but most majority of solutions don't. So then you have to spend time analyzing on your own. What could I have done to come up with this observation on my own? and build your problem solving skills from there. Or if you have someone to sort of coach you and give you those problem solving skills, even better. It'll help expedite that process and increase your rate of progress even more. Another part to this is making sure you're working on problems that are about at your level. If you're working on problems that are too easy that you're able to get like 80% on your own, well, you will be able to get that same 80% in contest. So the time you spent on those 80% of problems aren't as useful because, you know, you'd be able to get them in contest. So why practice them? If you work on problems and you're able to get like 0% on your own, okay, now they're just way too difficult. And you're not able to track your progress because you don't know if you're getting better and better because you don't know if you're solving more and more problems of the same difficulty on your own. They're just too hard. So you want to work on problems that you're able to solve about 50 to 60% on your own. And that way you can keep increasing the difficulty. You'll notice that it first goes down for a little bit, a little bit below, but then as you get better, it backs up to 50%. So you can work on harder and harder problems and improve your skill. And more importantly, you can measure the effectiveness of your strategy. You can measure that, okay, previously I was able to solve problems of this difficulty. I was able to get about 40% on my own. Now I'm getting 65% on my own. Great, I've gotten better. I can up the difficulty a little bit so that the, the rate I'm able to do by myself is between 50 and 60%. Right now, obviously it might be a little bit below, 50, a little bit above 60, but 50 to 60 is like the sweet spot. If it's a little bit below or above, that's fine too. Just making sure the problems are specifically at your level and where you are currently in your Yusuko journey. So we talked about working harder to match your goals or reducing your goals to match your work. And we also talked about working smarter. So how does working smarter and working harder come into play and mesh together? Well, here's the deal. If you're at one of the lower divisions, you know, if you're in bronze, you can just work hard or work smart. But if you're trying to get to you know, gold, platinum, or camp, right? Pass silver, pass gold, pass platinum. You need to work both smart and hard to achieve your goals. And so taking all of this together, you know, if we work hard, we can get a large amount of hours in. But if you work hard at a, at a low rate, it's going to take way too long and we're not going to be able to achieve our goals in an efficient manner. And by the rate that you to go contest is getting harder, it's going to be very difficult. If we work just smart, 
but don't put in too many hours, that's not going to be helpful either. We want to make sure we're working hard and smart to maximize the amount of improvement we can get out of you know, our high school journey and advance to those higher divisions in USACO. So work hard and smart and check out the three videos linked in the corner and down below in the description. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It means a lot to me or a thumbs down. I suppose it affects the algorithm the same. So go for either one of those. I'll leave a comment down below on what you want to see next. And I'll do my best to accommodate those requests and, you know, try to make those videos too. And yeah, hit the subscribe button so you can see my future videos when they come out. And I'll see you in the next video later. Bye.